I'm Hugh Howitzer, and this is Southern California Gold. Driving 112 miles during our stay in the St. Louis O'Fallon, Illinois area has made our Prius thirsty for a couple of gallons of $1.99 gas. We're buying $1.99 gas that isn't exactly a $1.99 in California right now, which is today's destination. But wait, there's more. Cars can go farther with non-California gas. In rough numbers, this non-California gas formula can produce 10 miles to the gallon for every 8.5 mpg you'll get from a California pump. This is due to California's environmental regulations that are in a class by themselves. Now as we say goodbye to the arch, it's time to say hello to the St. Louis airport currently experiencing the new COVID-19 normal. As we say goodbye to the St. Louis airport, I hope that it and we can soon say goodbye to COVID-19 as we enjoy our moment of getting above it all. Not much new in the news, so we get our gate assignment and oh, look at this, Freddy. We get this free train ride to our gate and not a moment to spare. I have an idea. Let's call this segment Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It is less than three hours and 1,235 miles to touchdown at Los Angeles Airport. And it looks like our connecting flight out of Dallas has some company today. At 36 minutes and about 230 miles to touchdown, we find ourselves crossing the Colorado River a little north of Blythe, which means we also just crossed the border into California. Meanwhile, on the I-10 pedestrian bridge, the plane spotters are still looking for us in all the wrong places. The same is true for the plane spotters gathered on North Broadway. 18 minutes and 125 miles from touchdown, we dodge some thunderclouds over Palm Springs. As we punch through to the other side of the thunderstorm, we take a moment to think about Tony and Terry, just to name two of the very fine people who are resting at the Riverside National Cemetery. This hallowed ground also tells us that we have 65 miles to go and 13 minutes to touchdown. At seven minutes to touchdown, we see the novelty of a free-flowing 57 freeway and the heart of Anaheim's Platinum Triangle. The Triangle is essentially a place where the bicycles, buses, trains, the Angels baseball team, the Mighty Ducks hockey team, and nearby neighbor Mickey Mouse all come together. Look at that, Freddy. People in the Triangle are searching for us. Good luck. We are moving over 300 miles an hour, flying a mile and a half above the ground and roughly 15 miles away. Over Whittier's Whitwood Mall, Roger tries to find his home near the Los Alamitos military airfield about 20 miles away. Eh, close, but no cigar. Approaching Downey, we find ourselves down to the last mile above the ground. We can see Catalina Island almost 50 miles away, Long Beach Airport, and everything else in between. As we cross over Downey's East Coast, 
which is the real San Gabriel River, we are doing so at roughly 200 miles an hour. This means it'll take us an exact minute to fly coast to coast across Downey. And Roger's childhood home is now passing right under the belly of the plane. Here we see the 5 and 605 interchange, Downey's Rio San Gabriel Park, East Junior High, now Doty Middle School, Stonewood Shopping Center, Downey High School, the Civic Center, Warren High School, and Apollo Park, home of the Downey Historical Society. It's amazing to see how much interest there has been in our plane today. I think that bear is waving at us. As we fly north of the Los Amigos Golf Course, we cross Downey's west coast, also known as the Rio Hondo River. As this river meets the Los Angeles River, we enjoy the novelty of a free-flowing 710 freeway. Out the window we can see a lot of streets that'll soon be graced by a 1970 Cougar. For those that haven't been in Southern California for a while, the 105 Century Freeway was opened in 1994 with a light rail line down the center. Today it is moving unusually well due to COVID-19, as is the Harbor 110 Freeway. Oh, Freddie, get a shot of this! Cars actually moving on a free-flowing San Diego 405 Freeway. And we're back, back to the same runway complex where our Midwest car shopping adventure began. Heck, we are back on the same runway complex where U.S. passenger jet travel began, all while passing the airport's first ever building that dates back to 1930. Another building we're passing nearby is the old West Imperial Terminal, which is now being used as the Flight Path Museum. Fine people, great exhibits, free parking, and I could go on and on and on all day long. We'd like to thank the Flight Path Museum for their help in getting access to these fine, historic Los Angeles World Airports photos. As the next Roger Venture goes into the planning stages, take a moment to check out the novelty of a nearly deserted Los Angeles International Airport. We'd like to remind you that people, organizations, and business appear solely due to our own first-hand experiences with them. Your experience could be different, although we have our doubts it would be. No person, organization, or business paid in any way, shape, manner, or form for their appearance in this production, which is very unfortunate for our bottom line. At least we now know what a Roger Venture is. I'm Hugh Howitzer, and here's to a better future. Thanks for watching.